Welcome to Elite Expert Insider Podcast, where we will inspire, motivate, and educate entrepreneurs, innovators, and growth seekers. Brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, making the best and brightest in the industry number one best selling authors. 80% of people say they want to write a book. We're assuming that's the same for you. If so, contact us at www.eliteonlinepublishing.com and make your book a reality. Hey, welcome back for another great podcast. This is Melanie Johnson along with Jen Foster. How are you doing, Jen? Doing great. How's everyone doing today? Good. Well, we are continuing our series on StellarCon because we learned some amazing stuff from just some outstanding speakers that came there. Today, we're going to talk about John Mackey, who is the owner and founder of Whole Foods before he sold to Amazon. So, and ironically, it was an Amazon event that we were at. So um, we're going to talk about some of the key things that he learned and did. But first, we want to remind you, please subscribe to our podcast um, and leave us a review. We appreciate that. And if you're looking to write a book like John Mackey did um, and become a number one bestseller, hey, give us a shout out. Just go to our website at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. That's Elite onlinepublishing.com. You can subscribe to us there or put your submission in and reach out, either call us, email us, or put your uh, submission in there. So, all right, we are going to get started. We learned some killer stuff from John Mackey, uh, again, the starter, founder, owner of um, Whole Foods before he went on to sell to Amazon. And, you know, every owner has ups and downs. So you always think, oh, it's glorious. Everything went great. But he talked about a time, too, that things went upside down for him. And he thought he was going to lose the whole business. But it all turned up roses at the end. So it's really hanging in there and sticking in there through those ups and downs. Um, so, Jen, you want to start off, kick us off with something that um, rang true for you on yeah. that? Yeah, you know, um, the very first thing that I want to mention, and this was kind of the end of his talk, but um, he, he even kind of said it himself, but, you know, we have learned in the being an author and being in this a speaker that when you're speaking, your presentation is also your chapters of your book or some of the chapters of your book. So your book is your talk and your talk is your book. And we have learned that over the years. And we've tried to make sure that our authors that we work with understand that you don't have to reinvent the wheel, that when you're speaking on stage, it should be the content from your book. It, sh it, it could even just be your exact layout of your book with the different points um, or the first three chapters or whatever it is to get it across. And his call to action at the end of his talk was to go buy his book to learn more and to dive deeper into the subject that he was talking about, which was conscious capitalism. Yeah, I think that is so well said. So many times authors are like, I don't know what to write about or, you know, for a business owner. And it's, hey, pick the product or the platform that you're the most passionate about that you get the biggest return on investment for. And that's what you need to be writing about. And you got to say, this is how I want to brand myself. I want to brand myself as. So John Mackey, outside of Whole Foods, is branding himself as the conscious capitalist. And, um, and it was very compelling. And the funny thing was, he was like, if anyone's a socialist here, you need to leave the room now. I thought that was kind of funny. But um, obviously, I'm sure there were a lot of liberals as well as uh, conservatives there in that audience. And, but nobody left the room. They all wanted to hear what he had to say. So I thought that was uh, pretty cool. Well, I think, I, think, I think the biggest thing, too, is when people talk about capitalism, I think they get confused with another word because I was asking my kids and I told them about the talk and I said, because he did mention that millennials don't believe in capitalism. And I asked my kids, I said, do you know what capitalism means? Do you know what a capitalist is? And I think they're getting communist mixed up with capitalist because they said that they thought that it was like, you know, where there's somebody in charge, like someone's in charge of you, you know? Like a dictator, which is the exact opposite. You know, a capitalist is running their own business and calling their own shots. <laughs> wow, wow. That's really, that's interesting with everything that goes on in the news, how things can be uh, misunderstood um, at that young age. And that's getting, they're making that connection. And it's hard to break the connection that capitalism can be good. Um, I mean, we embrace capitalism because we have our own business and we wanted to be entrepreneurs. So um, one of the other things I would say that he drove home was 
having value for everyone. So he was saying, have it be a valuable experience. Like you say, well, your customer's gonna get value from my product. But he said, everyone should get value through the whole process and grow and feel good about it and feel appreciated. And so what did that mean? He said, from your supplier, your supplier should get value and feel, well, basically feel the love. Your customers should feel the love. Um, any group that you're involved with should feel appreciated and loved and get value out of it. So it's kind of that whole scheme. Look at your business. Everyone that you touch should be able to feel your culture and get value from it. So that was one of the big things that I think um, really hit home for me was to make sure that that happens. Right. Well, and I, and I was thinking back, you know, like if I talk to my nieces who are millennials and I ask them, what does capitalism mean to you? I don't think they would really understand with that, I don't think they would tell me what they, you know, that they'd know that it means free enterprise and being able to make your own money or have your own business or having this business open up and this, you know, not having monopoly, all of those kind of things that go into, you know, capitalism. But I thought one of the great things that he talked about was just the history, history of the economics of our country. And he talked about, you know, from 200 years ago, 90% uh, of people were poor and six, so then he went through the different countries and the percentages. And then he talked about how because of capitalism, we are ending poverty on earth. So in 2019, now we're not in poverty, right? They're not even close. And I don't have the exact numbers, but check out his book. And he has graphs and, and pictures to show you the difference between 200 years ago and today. And it's all because we've had free enterprise and capitalism. We've been able to create our own wealth. Yeah, over the last 40 years, I think it's been um, that poverty levels are the lowest they've ever been in history. Um, so if you take 2019, but it's not, it didn't just fall off in 2019, it's been gradually getting less and less. So he's saying we're having less people, there's always gonna be poverty. Um, because you have people who are of mental illness and um, addiction issues and things like that. There's always going to be some poverty. But he said, so a lot of those people have moved up to the middle class. And then what's happened is the, a lot of the middle class has opened up to the upper class. So it's like everybody's been moving up the, the chain, which um, he attributes to having capitalism and, and that um, becoming so much better. And then the other thing he was saying, which I think is a big millennial um, uh, pinpoint about aligning yourself with a cause that's bigger than you. So companies that are giving back, that are doing their part. So that is a good thing about capitalism that you can, once your company gets to that point where you can start um, giving back to people and um, aligning yourself with a cause that's greater than your company. So Jen and I recently just uh, aligned Elite Online Publishing with the Barbara Bush Foundation, uh, Literacy Foundation. So we have a book publishing company. We promote writing and reading and um, um, uh, everything that goes with literacy. So we are now doing a partnership with them. And everyone who works with us, we donate, uh, sponsor a child, which donates books to a child. And we're working with their um, auction to donate a publishing package and doing awareness by having them on our website and things like that so you know figure out what works for your company and sometimes you make it be like gosh I don't have the funds to write a check to these companies but what do you have do you have time to donate do you have um, resources that that company that foundation can use so like for Jen and I if we're not if we weren't in a position to write a check we can like we're gonna do those things as well is to donate to the auction, um, a publishing package, to donate books, which we have, to have our authors donate books. Like what do we have in our arsenal that would be supportive for this foundation that um, can help the bigger picture? I love that. And I think um, the big thing too is, you know, just when you do give, you receive back. And so, you know, what goes, what goes around comes around. And so, you know, when you have that karma, it, it, it just expands your business, right? Definitely. And, um, you know, and he was saying to uh, end meetings. So this is like a corporate thing. So he says, every meeting that you have, you need to end it with appreciation. So he was saying people had to go around and say what they appreciated for that day, that week um, from the business, or if it was someone that they had worked with. And I thought, what a great way. It's like being grateful. What a great way to 
put uh, like a rosy smile on things. Even if someone that you're having a difficult time, maybe in the workplace, you can say, I appreciate this about them or this situation. So he said it really diffuses things and puts people in a really happy uh, mindset when you're having that. Yes, I think that's key. And not only just in your business, but in your family, you know, mm -hmm. when going around the room and telling, you know, each other what you appreciate about them. You know, my son does um, Ultimate Frisbee. And if you've ever watched Ultimate Frisbee, what they do at the end of the game is they get both teams together in a circle and they talk about the wins of the game. And it's really cool because they can go around and say, you know, oh, I really liked how you ran fast or each little kid gets to go around and, or if you're playing as an adult, you go around and you talk about appreciation for the other players, whether it's on your team or a different team. Oh man. And you know what? I, I am so guilty of sometimes um, if I had a bad day or a bad week and I can just attest, I just had a call with my mom and she's like, so what's going on? And usually I am not a complainer or anything. And I just told her, it just seems like nothing is going right. I'm just having like a couple of those days where this, 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 and this, and this. And then she said, well, what happened that was good? And I went, well, and when I started doing the good things, I was like, dang, like if I just said the good things that happened this week, like that was really good. I mean, that wasn't like a little good. That was like really good things that happened, but I was letting the bad things in my mind or things that didn't go right. And they totally dominated and overshadowed the positive stuff. So don't get caught in that circle. Try and spin it around and look at the good stuff and where that's taking you. And sometimes the things that you think aren't going right are because it's taking you to where you need to be to get to the right spot. You know, like if you're having difficulty with a, a business partnership and well, maybe it's because you're supposed to be steered away from that partner and there's supposed to be a better partner that's waiting for you. So if you, once you break from them and this, the situation is blowing up, it's so you can open up space to go somewhere else where you're supposed to be directed. Whether you think, um, you know, for, for me, I think that that's where God's directing me. If um, that's what you believe or the universe. But for me, I just think, well, God's trying to tell me to move over here. And I always say to do it before he takes the baseball bat out and really makes the situation bad. So I will look at the other options of what's going on there. I love that. Well, so, do you want to share your screen and share that um, document that we found that was inside the book, Consciousness Creator? Con so, yeah, so this is like the circle. And if you're not on video right now, we'll kind of spell it out for you a little bit so you can um, see. So he's saying, come up with your core values and the societal mission for your company. So what are the core values? What is your mission for society? And then that needs to spread out to everything that you do. So he's saying, um, you know, you get team membership happiness, motivated team members, innovation and customer service, but it spreads out to your partnerships and your vendors, to your customers, to the environment and the community um, and get motivated donors too that want to help your cause. So um, we're saying like with our books, I think our authors are going to be thrilled that they're going to be part of a literacy foundation and help the world to read. So as you can see, so it's this circle. So it's, um, we'll start with the team membership happiness, motivated team members, innovation of customer service, then the partnerships with your vendors and suppliers, how that works back and forth, that they're going to give you high quality service and good value on that, satisfied and delightful customers. So that means your sales is going to grow, your profits are going to grow, going to grow. When you have motivated donors, you get responsible citizens, people giving back. The community, environmental and responsiveness also equates to increased job satisfaction and happy team members. So it's this big circle. Um, if you're looking for this graphic, just um, all you have to do is Google uh, John, um, John, Mackey. Smith, John Mackey's name, and then um, it'll pop up in images. You'll see this image is green with white. So I recommend you look that up and it's great to have, you can have it posted up for your company. We're going to post it up for ours. So um, that was our learning experience from the amazing selling machine called SellerCon um, with the owner of Whole Foods. And uh, if you like this, please subscribe to our podcast and leave us a great review. We'd appreciate it. Great. Well, we hope to see you guys on the next podcast and we'll talk to you soon. Yep. And remember, if you'd like to do a book, um, just remember to contact us at Elite Online Publishing. Talk to you next time. 
If you'd like to create the most powerful advertising tool for your business, contact us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com, where we will help you create, publish, and make your book a number one bestseller, and show you how to get new leads and more revenue for your business. If you'd like to check us out on our Facebook page, we have a free book for you as our gift. Just go and click free book. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment for our podcast. We would love to hear from you.